At the beginning of the 18th century, a group of towns started growing around the eastern city of Santiago de Cuba, the original capital city of the Spanish colony of Cuba. One of them, Palma Soriano, is located where the two main tributaries of the Calto flow from the Sierra Maestro Mountains to form Cuba's longest river. The name Palma Soriano derives from the stately Cuban royal palm and the last name of the owner of a tavern on the main road of the little village. We saw a vibrant city full of life beautiful art, extraordinary art. One day I went to the river and we swim there and I swim and I feel like good. I didn't notice that it was so contaminated. But then in the night I was like with fever and I didn't feel good for like two days. I realized how important it is for every single house to have clean water to drink and how important it is to keep this space as a public space. As history advanced, the economic and social development of the country moved to Havana. But Palma, seen by many as a town stopped in time, continued on its own path of culture and art, enriched by a mix of indigenous Spanish and African cultures. The immigration of Haitians and the rich natural environment that surrounds this town. Este es un barrio de adoquín, nena. These are the things that uh, we did in the U.S. 100, 150 years ago. Um, it's not, uh, doesn't require highly sophisticated analysis, um, but it does require kind of a systematic approach, and uh, we would need some funding from, from uh, international foundations or other sources. We, we really come back with great impressions. We come back with seeing the beauty of the people and the beauty of the countryside and knowing that the people here are hardworking and, and want to make a, you know, a bright future for themselves. And so it's up to us now to come back to the United States and try to figure out what it is we can do to help them do for themselves to make, to make Soriano Palma a, a better place to live. <laughs>